My name is Rich Harrington and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today we're going to take a look at how we can use the Adjustments panel to more quickly enhance our images. Now even if you're not using Photoshop CS4, you can take advantage of the flexibility that adjustment layers offer, but in CS4 they've gotten much easier to access and much more responsive. So let's see how it works. I've gone ahead and opened up two photos, and if you head on over to Creative Cow, you can actually download these images as well and work along with us. So here we go, and let's take a start. I've got this photo of a statue opened up, and you'll see the adjustments panel here. Now this consolidates all of the adjustment layers into one simple panel. Previously, you would choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then choose from this list. And what would happen is, is you'd get a giant floating window right over the screen here. It's kind of hard to make color correction decisions when the user interface is blocking the picture. So fortunately in Photoshop CS4 they streamlined this. So we can go ahead here for example and click on Vibrance and add a Vibrance adjustment layer. And this allows us to pop the colors in a little bit nicer way than hue saturation does. That worked out nice there. And if we want to we could toggle that off and on by clicking the visibility icon to see the before and after. The Vibrance Adjustment also has its own saturation slider and this is different than the Hue Saturation Adjustment. This Saturation Adjustment slider is less likely to produce clipping or banding, which is really good when you're making graphics for video. So that's working really well. If we change our mind, we could just click the trash icon and throw that away. You'll also notice several useful presets. So while we could pick the curves adjustment, we also have useful defaults here we can use. For example, a medium contrast adjustment, which puts a nice S curve, or a little bit stronger there with strong contrast. And you see that these are meant to get you more quickly to the desired end result. You could reset these here by just clicking the reset button and it'll return the defaults. You've got the ability to say auto, and what I really like is this useful little hand icon here, which allows me to come on over to the image and click to add a control point. And so now I know I'm affecting just that area. I can click on the trees here and add a control point. And you see how I can adjust just those areas very simply. And that works really well. I really like that on image adjustment because it makes it simpler. You don't have to guess where should I be tweaking, what slider do I use. This just makes it a snap. Click and it's there. Let's add another adjustment by clicking the back arrow and we'll apply the black and white adjustment. And you'll see the same on image adjustment controls available. So I can click in the image here and notice how I'm using that particular slider and I can affect the value of the tree. If I click on the sky here, that's more controlled by the blues. And we can get a more controlled black and white conversion because we are independently affecting just the areas of the photo that need it most. Push the greens up a little bit there and click on the statue here, pull that down. So, very, very versatile. Now let's take a look at one more image and see how these on image adjustments as well as the adjustments panel work to get the job done. We'll switch on over to a different photo here and let's go after a couple of areas. I'm very unhappy with the sky here. Let's take a technique we used earlier in one of our shows called Color Range Command. Select Color Range. Make sure the Invert box is not checked and then just click on the color that you want. Holding down the Shift key you can pick up more until you've got a good selection. There we go. When satisfied I'll click OK and now we can go after just that blue sky. Let's do that with a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer and we'll roll the color of the sky until we get a blue that we want. There we go, a little more saturation. And we have control, green to blue. That's looking pretty good. We'll lift that up a bit. And we're already getting a nicer sky than we had before. Before, after. So that worked pretty well. I'll go ahead and go back and add another overall adjustment, which is vibrance. And we'll put a little more vibrance in the scene to really pop the colors. That's looking pretty good. A little too much here on the statue, so we can do select color range if we want and click on the statue to make a selection. That works out well. Notice how we can get a nice pickup in just an individual area. 
and then we could tone that down. See, the vibrance mask limited it. Now, if you don't want that mask on that particular layer, just throw it in the trash and you can delete it. And instead, make sure none of your mask layers are selected, then choose Select Color Range on your image itself. We'll select the statue here. There we go. Got the statue pretty well. Soften that up. And we'll just tone the middle area down here, adding a second vibrance adjustment. And we'll put that on top. There we go. Pulling down the saturation for the statue. And that worked out well. We have nice color in the rest of the scene, but the statue has lost some of its saturation. Very, very flexible. And notice all of that is there. Useful presets that you can choose from. If you decide you want to just put a little bit more in there, for example, let's add a little bit of contrast to this image. It's just a single click, and it's available. Easily make changes, do and undo, or even trash. The Adjustments panel is a great streamlined tool. It takes all of the common color correcting tasks you're going to need and puts them in one central area. This means less clicking, less work, less time wasted. Make sure you make it a part of your workflow and get used to the subtle changes that are inside of Photoshop CS4 that will help you get the job done more quickly. Now, if you don't have CS4, that's okay. Most of these adjustments are available in older versions. You're just going to have to click a little bit more often to get the job done. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. My name is Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Photoshop forums, post questions, as well as check in and give us ideas for future podcasts. Thanks again.